Guess what guys, I got my diver's license. How's it going fellow photophiles? My name is Ilya and welcome to the weekly Wednesday vlog. And the first news on the weekly Wednesday vlog is that I skipped last week. Woohoohoo! Sorry about that, I had a lot of work with the kids camp and everything during the spring. And if you really want like top-notch consistency, check out my Patreon in the description. So I think it's time for me to formally introduce my Xiaomi Yi 2K. For 50 bucks, this thing is a beast. And I've used it in everything from action to studio recording as you've seen in some of my previous vlogs. So over the weekend, I went on a road trip to Croatia with a couple pals from our diving club. But I didn't bring my camera because I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't want it to be stolen or broken or get wet or something like that. But I did bring my action camera though most of the time it was just mounted on my head. The first dive was 15 meters maximum depth. Lots of different shells and starfish, nothing special, just getting used to the feeling of being underwater at significant depth. Of course you notice how everything is blue and green under the water because when the sun enters the water, the other colors on the frequency get lost. The camera captures it exactly the same way, everything is blue and green and sometimes you have to really boost the saturation of the other colors to have a balanced image. The second dive was only 5 meter maximum depth, just practicing keeping balance and also hunting for oysters. I probably ate like 15 oysters that day. I was really fascinated by those giant shells which really prop themselves up in the sand. I hope I can make a time lapse one day of how the shells kind of just lying there and it and it stands there. Sometimes the visibility of the water is really bad, like four or five meters. So then you have to come like super close to every object just to be able to see it on camera and like dangle upside down with your feet in the air so your camera is really close to whatever you found lying on the seafloor. And it gets kind of difficult when the camera is on your head and you have no screen, you don't know what's going on. So you're kind of like hoping that it films something. So those two dives were kind of surrounded by land, it was closed area. And then on the last day we went to the most important and final dive, which was situated on the other side of the land and it was facing open sea. So this was an open sea dive. It's a little bit different, it's colder, it's more demanding, but it's got better scenery. The last dive was 23 meters deep at maximum depth and it had lots of interesting things to see cool plants and sea life. We got several starfish, we found an octopus, lots of jellyfish floating around, there was even a pottery dump and stuff like that. If you ever go diving, remember that keeping track of your instruments and your teammates and the commands between you is a lot more important than the footage you're getting. Don't get too carried away, like I was prone to several times. As far as the footage, I'm quite satisfied. Generally when shooting with this camera, I don't like how over sharpened it is and sometimes it gets really jerky at 60 frames per second. But as far as light sensitivity and colors underwater, it did a lot better than I expected. I could also hear the beeps under the water, so I'd know exactly when it was filming or taking pictures or whatever. And a small tip, better tie your camera or the strap for your camera to something like the air tank or another piece of equipment so it doesn't float away because it can slip off really easily and either fall to the ground or fall to the surface and you might not find it. Well, if you found this informative or entertaining, you know what to do. I appreciate you guys hanging around and remember that requests are open for any video you want to see. Thank you for watching and see you guys next week.